Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Kara Feeney and I am the Director of Exhibitions here at the Evanston Art Center. We are excited to have you all with us here today. Um, so a few um, uh, housekeeping rules for Zoom. We do ask that everyone except Paula, myself, and Barbara stay on mute during the presentation. Mute can be found at the bottom of your screen here. For me, it's right here. Um, so it's the, the button that looks like a mic. So if you, if you just stay on mute, please. Um, and then after the presentation, we will have time for Q&A. So if you have any questions during the course of the presentation, please type them into the chat function. And for me, that's right here, also on the bar at the bottom of the screen. Um, and at the end of the evening, I will read the questions uh, for Barbara to answer. So again, just use the chat function um, during that time. Um, and let's see, we have a few more people to admit. Um, I would like to introduce Paula Danoff, our president and CEO, who will then introduce Barbara. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Evanston Arts Center. We're here with the upstairs gallery space that includes all of Barbara's beautiful work. I encourage you to stop by. The show is open until December 20th. So uh, if you're in the neighborhood, we're open seven days a week. Please stop by and um, you can view this incredible exhibit. A little bit about Barbara. Barbara was born into a family of artists, designers, and inventors. Since childhood, she has produced work in a variety of different art forms. She received her MFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in video, computers, and performance. And she is a retired, tenured professor of television from Columbia College, Chicago. She was there from 1982 to 2005. In 1974, Barbara became one of Chicago's pioneering video and new media artists, known for her tapes, multimedia installations, and performances. Not long afterwards, Barbara also established herself as an independent video producer, exhibition curator, and teacher. Her earlier work was painterly and exhibited unprecedented skills in electronic image generation. In 2017, Barbara began to paint. Her paintings are lyrical, colorful abstractions, reminiscent of organic shapes, ethereal forms, and underwater landscapes, evocative impressions of spiritual and elemental, elemental worlds. They are created through a meditative, intuitive practice. The unconscious becomes conscious as colors flow across the paper and forms emerge in silence. A sense of stillness and movement are captured as images surface, blend into each other and become redefined. Ethereal abstractions evokes the spontaneity themes and underlying presence of the divine feminine, reoccurring threads that reflect and continue from Barbara's previous body of time-based and digital artwork. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Barbara Sykes to all of you this evening. Thank you so much. And thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Well, thank you, Barbara. One moment. Let me just spotlight you for everyone. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can everyone see Barbara here? <laughs> Hi. So oh, first off, I really would like to thank the Evanston Art Center for selecting me uh, for a solo exhibition. Paula and Kara have been exceptional in their support of me and uh, we've really collaborated in pulling this together from the exhibition itself to the online gallery and the artists of talk. So I am deeply grateful. And I'm also really happy to see my friends and family and uh, new faces here. It's, uh, it's great to be able to share this with you. 
I was asked to do an artist talk and I thought, you know, what I would really say. And so I think uh, I am going to talk about myself as an artist, you know, and kind of my path or my journey um, through my artistic career where I really uh, started and then where I'm at today. So we'll end with the paintings. Um, but I'll, I'll start with my uh, previous body of work. I think it's important in order to know me is to really understand um, the underlying threads that really unite my work together that run through it. And so if you have some questions for me, it, it would be great. I'd love to hear you and uh, also receive your feedback. With that in mind, I think we'll just start the PowerPoint and then we'll go from there. It's 10 minutes and I hope you enjoy it. Okay. See it? Kira, are we good? Yep, looks good. My life, career, and art are intrinsically intertwined, intersecting paths on a journey of self-discovery. In 1974, I became one of Chicago's pioneering new media artists, and later to include independent video producer, curator, and Columbia College professor of television. In the 70s, mass culture had no idea that video computers or that electronic art existed. What distinguished my earlier work was unique imagery I created solely on the Dan Sandine Image Processor, IP, an analog computer and video synthesizer. It ranged from animated abstract paintings to luminescent figurative art. In 1978, I produced Electronic Masks, a humorously engaging piece reminiscent of North American totems and masks that's illustrative of my earlier groundbreaking work. In the 1970s, I also produced a body of historically significant work with Tom DeFonte, a computer artist and scientist. Notably, our Tom and my performances together during the first live computer visualization events of their kind the EVE events in 1975, 76, and 78. During EVE 1 in 1975, Tom, Drew Browning, and I performed the poem that was based on a poem I wrote. In 1976, Tom and I performed Circle Nine Sunrise during EVE 2. And in 1978, we produced By the Crimson Bands of Sidorak and Duels for EVE 3. In the 70s, I also produced multimedia performances and installations using the IP, large screen projectors and monitors. A movement within 1976, I danced to live music to pre-programmed IP effects. And for reflections, I jammed on the IP to Michael Sterling on Moog synthesizer as Jan Lewis danced. Later, Michael and I performed to audience participation. For Environmental Cemetery in 1978, I performed on the IP to audience participation in a public space, interacting with each other through their processed images. Video Haiku 1981 through 1986 is a series of video poems and mythic stories inspired by indigenous women spiritual leaders and activists, stages of awareness and my dance and martial art performances. I Dream of Dreaming, 1981, was inspired by the Japanese mythological sun goddess and my dreams, poetry, and precognition. For the 1982 and 83 Experimental TV Center's artist residencies, self-portraits were produced. In the 80s, my work changed dramatically and the experimental tool systems used. <clears throat> Witness, 1982, depicts itself as observer, the unconscious in contact with the conscious. To witness is an essential part of understanding life experiences while not being ruled by them. Kalian, 1986, was inspired by the blind Filipino princess, a freedom fighter and founder of the martial art Kali. Kalian personifies a female warrior spirit whose inherent qualities are first, first fought, then realized, and eventually integrated into harmony with the self. 
Kali can com com combine broadcast post-production effects with techniques from Kali, Kabuki theater and dance to depict a primordial and futuristic sensibility. During my 14th month Columbia College sabbatical and Chicago Artists Abroad Artists Residency 1988 through 89, I presented my retrospective and my curated program, Video and Computer Art Chicago Style, at 13 sites in Japan, Australia, Spain, and I was the first woman video artist to present in China. These pivotal exhibitions helped migrate Chicago's innovative art forms worldwide. During the same 14 month period, I was also in intensive research and production in Asia, the Mideast and Africa. I submerged myself in a vast array of powerful experiences and had a quantum shift in my understanding of the world. I documented ritual worship and the people I encountered. From these shoots, I produced In Celebration of Life, In Celebration of Death, a series of experimental ethnographic documentaries that reveal the religious, cultural, and philosophic beliefs of indigenous people that revolve around life and death. Shiva Darshan shot in Nepal is on Hinduism, holy men, spirituality, and transcendence. Song of the River shot in Borneo portrays a harmonious relationship that people have with one another and with the river animals, birds, and rainforest. It's a devotional piece honoring their spirituality, wisdom, integrity, and respect for life. Ama, a documentary of a living saint, is an exquisitely beautiful, extraordinarily powerful portrayal of one woman's rise from poverty, abuse, and discrimination to become a world-renowned spiritual leader and global social activist. It sheds new light on women's history. Ama speaks truth to power. I was a featured artist in the Museum and Contemporary Art in Chicago's 50-year retrospective exhibition, Art in Chicago, 1945 to 95, and the companion book produced from the show. I'm one of the featured artists and contributors in the 2018 book, New Media Futures, The Rise of Women in the Digital Arts, that captures the contributions of 22 pioneering Midwestern women integral to the development of the digital arts and at the forefront of technological innovation, social change and artistic inquiry. I'm participating in the book tours and enjoying the road trips with these extraordinary women. The past several years, I've taken digital photographs of the women's movement. Urban scenes. The beauty of decay. And more recently, in 2017, I began to paint in watercolor. Ethereal Abstractions is my first solo watercolor exhibition, showcased at the Evanston Arts Center, November 8th through December 20th, 2020. 81 paintings are currently online, and 63 of the paintings are in the second floor gallery. They are lyrical, colorful abstractions, reminiscent of organic shapes, underwater landscapes and ethereal forms, evocative impressions of the spiritual and elemental worlds created through a meditative intuitive practice. The unconscious becomes conscious. Forms emerge and become known. Stillness and movement are captured. Image, images take on a life of their own and become one.
Ethereal abstractions evoke the spontaneity, spontaneity and reoccurring themes that have evolved from when I first started producing art as a child that continues into my time-based and digital artwork and now with my paintings. Ethereal Abstractions is currently on view and for purchase at the Evanston Art Center second floor gallery and online website. Funded in part by Three Arts, the Evanston Art Center and Illinois Art Center. Special thanks to Paula Dano, Cara Finney, and Ashley Pastor. For additional information about me, please visit my Wikipedia webpage, Barbara Sykes Artist. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. That was great. Oh, that's good. It's over. I was nervous. <laughs> so nice. good. Um, any questions? I can't talk to them. It's better with the text, huh? Um, well, if, if we want. Uh, I can't hear you. Should if, I turn something off? So um, if we want to go into questions now okay. and people want to use their mic. Um, just make sure uh, should that I stop sharing or I can't hear you, Kara. You can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Barbara? Hi. Kara, I can't hear you. Is there something I should do? Um, you can't hear me at all. <laughs> Is that right? Can't hear me. Barbara, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. We can... So um, maybe you could unmute your mics and I can hear you. Is that good? Or how do I do this? Um, can anyone? Can, can anyone? You hear us? Hi, I it's can Claire. Can you hear me? You're both. You worked in many different mediums. What? Do you particularly like about watercolor? Ah, I love, um, to me, I'm a very intuitive. Uh, the question was, uh, you've worked in many different media. What do you particularly like about watercolor? And um, I've always been a very spontaneous and, and intuitive artist. So uh, no matter the medium, it's, uh, pretty much how I, I work with it. It's more like a dance and I interact with it and, um, and it's a dialogue that it occurs. So when I paint, I don't um, draw or sketch anything out first. I just paint on a black blank sheet of watercolor paper. And then in the process of painting, uh, things are in effect revealed to me. And so that helps determine uh, how I move forward next. So it really is um, a relationship that I have with my work that I enjoy. So, um, uh, Barbara, talk to us about paintings 59 through 63 that are leaf-like. Um, I uh, shut down PowerPoint, uh, um, the PowerPoint, so I'm gonna kinda I, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I, <laughs> I just paint and um, I think that I have, I feel most comfortable. Uh, oh, there they are, they're in the background. So the, uh, the leaf that she was talking about are kind of in the middle. Um, they were done with a slightly diff different technique than how I typically paint watercolors. So I did some scraping and, uh, uh, and moving of the paint while it was still wet. Um, ah, there's another one. That's a good example. And that one, actually, when I was younger, I used to draw like that. So it, it's reminiscent of my drawings when I was a teenager. And uh, so 
that. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, the question is, oh, hi, Larry. <laughs> Can you hear? Hi. Uh, I stopped painting in 1979 from Paul to focus on digital art. Did you paint before going into video? Um, I had a friend who was a painter when I was in undergraduate school doing video art. And um, so he talked me into going to his studio and I did two paintings. And that was it. So it wasn't until decades later that I picked up the brush and started to paint. But uh, the paintings I did, one was abstract, uh, a kind of hard edge abstract, very colorful. And the other was a kind of a bird, an abstract bird, not realistic. So, but I come from a paint, uh, my uh, family, um, many of my siblings are painters. So, uh, I think that it kind of runs in the blood. So I really didn't get interested in it until really later in my life. For many, many years, my, I was really very much devoted to electronic art. Okay, here's another one. The audio work you did in the 1970s and before was likely in a male dominated world. Uh, how did that affect you? <laughs> Well, uh, you're right. It was predominantly male. And uh, actually, there were very few women. After I left, uh, I started at Circle. And after I left, a bunch of women came on board. So that's great. Some very powerful and uh, gifted uh, women. And a number, number of them are in the New Media Arts book. Um, but I found, uh, you know, Tom and Dan, uh, Tom Defani and Dan Sanding were extremely supportive and they created uh, an environment that allowed access to the equipment and uh, many live events to occur. So in that respect, they were phenomenal. And uh, so I give them a lot of credit. I wouldn't say that to all the men in the field. I think there was a lot of sexism going on and uh, claiming work done by other people and all kinds of things. But um, uh, Tom Defani and Dan Sandin uh, were um, instrumental in kind of the beginning of my life, kind of walked in the door and um, asked if I could sit in a class. And uh, that was it, kind of started my career. Um, okay. Is there some way that working in an electronic video and watercolors connect process wise? Absolutely. Uh, again, uh, you know, uh, I feel uh, my strengths really comes out of um, a very intuitive, spontaneous process. So when I shot, it was like a dance. I'd pip, pick up a camera and I would disappear uh, but I would move very closely and get into a kind of an intimate relationship with my subject matter or matters and move within space, capturing it. Um, and I, uh, most of the shooting I did was actually in Asia, Southeast and West Asia. So I couldn't speak the language for the most part. And uh, they tend to be nonverbal um, very much more so nonverbal culture than let's say in uh, Western countries. Uh, I would receive their permission. They, I would wait until they were aware of me and then I would shoot, uh, always with respect. And with the paintings, it's a form of respect too. Uh, sometimes uh, we are uh, totally in sync and other times I'm struggling and I hate what I do. And, it's a mess, <laughs> so I got to walk away from the painting. Um, but there is that connection. Uh, another question, are the documentary films you did available for viewing? Yes, uh, a collection of my work is on Media Burn, M-E-D, 
ieburn.org. And um, so I have a selection of my work on there. They have 280 about of my raw footage, rough cuts, compilation, dubs in their archives, which will eventually be distributed. I mean, uh, will eventually be digitized and put online. Um, I'm downscaling and I'm, you know, at, and <laughs> I'm older. So I feel it's a good time to donate the work. So that's what I did. And Media Burn is a fantastic organization. And uh, Tom uh, Weinberg is a male, also part of the whole video scene in the 70s. And he is an exceptional individual who's done tremendous work, social, political activism through video and uh, supported uh, you know, electronic artists and independent producers and filmmakers. Um, the decay studies and work are amazing. Is there an aspect of seeing the beauty of everything, of knowing that there is beauty to be found even among wounds? Yes. Thank you, Larry. Absolutely. Um, with my work, you know, the world is, can be a harsh and brutal and toxic place, including the people within it, as we're all well aware in the time we live in. And uh, when I uh, saw things, I saw also the, the beauty as much as the conflicting elements that uh, occur simultaneously. So I could see, you know, I, I documented a lot of abandoned churches that were just exquisite and beautiful. And it was just tragic to see them, but I could still see the beauty within them. Who's that? <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> So um, yes, so that's a connection. Um, after the questions, I can do a quick virtual tour of the exhibition as well. Let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, any other questions? We're about six o'clock, let's see. I'm checking the questions now. But you know, I think uh, I think of myself not so much as a painter, but as an artist. And I think that's what my artist talk is about. I'm an artist, and I'll pick up whatever I got, whenever I got it, and I'll work with it. So if I don't have tech, I'll pick up a pencil. You know, I'll write a poem. If I don't have a paint, if I can paint, I'll paint. If I can't do that, it'll always be something. And I think. That's really my driving force. It's, you know, I have a need and a desire to express myself and, and also share it. Not always, but, uh, you know, I do. And I think that's what artists do anyhow. You know, they draw upon their inner world. They, they draw upon their experiences in, in the outside world. And then they uh, take form. It takes shape. And then you know, rather than live in a closet, artists want to share it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully this was good. Uh, let's see. Do you have any advice on inspiring artists and painters? Um, bottom line, don't give up. You just have to do it. And I think truth of the matter is, you know, artists, uh, you know, the creative people in the world rarely get compensated for their work. So art really is uh, devotional. It's devotional work. The artists do it because they need to do it and they need to have that relationship. That becomes their voice, that becomes their vision, that becomes something they want to share in the world and they may or may not get strokes for it. So uh, yeah, you just need to do it and not give up. And if you want to show and submit your work, do it. Um, you shouldn't be intimidated if things don't work out or it takes a while before they do, because it's always a crapshoot. You don't know what the selection committee is looking for. And um, so you, you just need to work. And I think ultimately art is about doing work. Uh, it's your voice going out of yourself. And uh, 
it's not necessarily for the audience. It can be, it can also be, but I think it needs to start with yourself because it is, it is a dialogue. It is a dialogue with yourself. It's, it's like dreams. Yeah, your unconscious taps in and, and knocks on the door of your consciousness. And so you then you bring your dream state into the, the, the real world, so to speak. And, um, and that's what art is. It's not different from that. It's just another state. And I think that's what all artists share is they experience another state. They don't, they're not looking at the world in, this, in an objective way. It's very subjective because it comes from self. Okay, let's see. What next? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep producing and working and, uh, you know, I don't really know, you know? I think the idea is right now, this is what I'm doing and uh, until I do something else. Okay. Any other questions? Well, um, I love you, mom. Can't help it, my mom's here. <laughs> I haven't seen her in, in so long and my heart is breaking. So I'm going to take this time to say, I, I love you, mom. And she is also an artist, self-taught. She's laughing. <laughs> Anyhow, um, it's great to see everybody. Uh, I can see friends and families and new faces and stuff. And it, oh, hi, Anya. I, I, I just, yeah, hi. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So this is all good. This is all good. Oh, Marion even showed up. <laughs> oh, Mirko, hi. So I could go on saying hi to everybody. <laughs> um, but I will take any more questions. Um, Carol uh, wanted to walk around the gallery and show you the space. They, they were just wonderful. They gave me this huge, huge gallery space. Um, so I've got, um, if you're interested, uh, she'll do the walk around and, uh, and if there's, I'll keep my eye out on any questions. So, uh, Kara, do you want to take over now or what? I wish yes. I could hear you. One moment. Can you hear me, Barbara? I can't hear you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So uh, for anyone who can hear me, one moment, I'm going to set up my other. I don't, I don't know why I can't hear you. And then can I'll you do, help me with that? I'll do a walk around. It must be in the settings. So I'm going to let you do that while I figure out how to listen to you. Thank you all.
Okay, I have to speak. Paul is frozen over here. Um, and that's- I can't hear you. That's all of the, all of the work. One moment, I'll uh, chat with Barbara. Yeah, the audio isn't muted. Uh, yours actually has a red mute. Uh, your your audio is muted, Kara, but I can't deselect it. So um, I'm unmuted now. Any anything working for you? Any audio? <laughs> no. I don't know what to say. I I can't I can't hear you. Okay. Um, well, everyone who can hear me, that is the, the full exhibition here with all the work. Um, I'm just going to uh, chat with Barbara in the chat function and let her know that what I'm saying. <laughs> One moment. So um, this did work before. We did test it right before the um, talk began and there wasn't any problem. So I'm not sure what happened in the interim, uh, but I apologize because I can't tell what's going on. Anyway. I want to thank everybody for coming. And, and spending time with me. Thank you very much. And it's wonderful to see each and every one of you. I did toggle through the images. And so it, it's been a great joy for me to have this time, especially, you know, during the coronavirus. This is as good as it gets, even without sound. I, I wanted to say something as well um, and just want to thank everyone for coming here today. Um, the, uh, our hours, our gallery hours were open. We have our winter expo downstairs and then you can come up to our second floor and see Barbara's beautiful work. Everything is on sale. Um, you can contact me. Again, I'm Cara Feeney. Um, if you're interested in purchasing any of Barbara's beautiful work, um, she can't hear any of my compliments about her <laughs> right now, but, but it really is very gorgeous. And, and we really encourage you all to, to come and, and visit um, here in person. Um, and we, can, we also have all of her work online on our website as well. So you could purchase um, online as well as in person. Um, so we're again, excited to have you all here in, um, <laughs> We'll, we'll tell Barbara at, a, at another time when she can hear us what a great job she did, um, and we're so excited to have our exhibition on display. <laughs>